Hello, my name is Tracy Stevens, and I went to the Bethel um, African Methodist Episcopal Church that is located on 14 South Beach Street in Oxford, Ohio. Um, personally, growing up, uh, my mother was raised Catholic. My father was uh, Pentecostal, I think. He's uh, so uh, church wise as a child. We were not raised in the Catholic faith because my father preferred us not to be. Um, but there was actually a, a Baptist church that would come to my neighborhood and pick the kids up and take us. So we would go there sometimes. And then there was just the, you know, the non-dominational Christian church that we would go to occasionally holidays and whatnot, um, the odd Sundays. Um, as I grew into an adult, um, I you know, expanded on my own personal views, and I do not go to church on Sundays. That's just my thing. Um, I haven't found, I guess, a spot that I fit yet with a church. Um, I've seen some great people in churches, met some great people, but then I've met some, you know, not so great. So, I'm a little conflicted when it comes to, you know, the life of church and church life. Um, I will say uh, my first, um, I guess, reaction to the Bethel Church is just a small little nondescript white building um, in Oxford. Cute little building. I mean, it's what you think of an old church. Um, nothing big or grander like the Catholic churches you know, from my mother's, you know, time. Um where they have all the stained glass. It's just, this is a church. This is where you can go. Um, and it's, it's where you go to get the job done, so to speak. They, they don't need any big hula uh, to get you in the door. <laughs> um, I did try to go to Dr. Child's church last week, but there was a mix up. They were on a great um, field trip, which was actually amazing that you do that with your congregation. Um, and I knew I was going to be up in the Oxford area today so I went here and I'm kind of happy I, I I did go I mean of course I missed out on seeing your service but the history um, of the Methodist Church in particular when it pertains to um, the black religious institution um, I did have notes I'll look at but we we, you know, we learned in our, our readings um, about um, was it 17, yeah, 1787 at St. George Methodist, um, Richard Allen and Absalom Jones. They were pulled from uh, their knees in prayer to go to, you know, the black section, which I guess I shouldn't even quote that because there really was a black section, and they decided to leave the church. And they, from there, went and they founded the Free African Society, and that led to the independent churches in the United States. Um and then in 1816, Allen um, brought together the other congregations, if I have my dates right, um, to form the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I think the original was in Pennsylvania. Um, so the actual building I went to, the little adorable white church, um, was actually built in 1855 by Jewel Collins. When you walk up these, just a couple steps, um, just a one-room building right there, a bunch of pews in the back. And then the area for the pastor to sit in um, over on the your left is where the choir and the key, keyboardist is. And then um, and there's a door going through to you know other areas of the church. But it really is just it's like a long one room church is what it is. But it's sectioned off now. Uh, and I'm thinking those are the add-ons in the back. I, the part we were in that was the actual church section was just. I think the original building, from what they are telling me. Um, so yeah, it was built in 1855 by Joel Collins, and then um, it was purchased by the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in um, 18... Oh, I had that date. 1860... 1857, I think is what it was. I don't want to say, 1856, sorry, 1856. It was right, I mean, they may have built the building for the church. They weren't 100% uh, 
clear on that with me. But it was built right away after or it was fought um, and became the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. <coughs> Excuse me. And since 1981, they've expanded it. And in fact, while we were there, they were talking because they are trying to get a new roof put onto the building. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. One of the fun facts they gave me is that one of its early pastors was a man named um, Hiram Revels, and he was the first African-American to serve in Congress. Um, so that was something they're kind of proud of and they like to boast about, uh, rightly so. Uh, when I entered the church, um, very small congregation, um, nothing but welcome. Um, like I said, I've gone to some Catholic services, some of the non-denominational Christian services. I've gone to a couple, you know, white Baptists. I've never done African American Baptist, so maybe in the future we'll get to that. Um, I've done some Jewish services. I've been to different things to try them out, and I will say that while I've always felt welcome, um, I don't think I've ever felt as welcome anywhere as I was in this church. I mean, immediately I was bombarded by Karen and Sharon, these lovely twin ladies who are a member of the choir, uh, hugs and handshakes and how are you and welcome. Um, Sister Jackie, who uh, I, everyone needs a Sister Jackie. I just want to just bring her home with me and just sit her in my room to be my cheerleader because, I mean, she just made the service more so than I think what it would have been if she hadn't been there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, the service is pastored by Reverend Terrence Cato, um, and then his wife, the Reverend Alice Cato, is his, the assistant pastor. Um, and they start off doing the um, doxology, and um, their doxology is praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise him, all creatures here below, praise him above each heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen. Now, I don't know if each church has their own doxology. I don't know if Methodists all share the same doxo doxology. I'm afraid I don't know enough about it. But what I have noticed is when they have that opening doxology, because I do know what a doxo doxology was, um, the ones I've gone to, it's kind of chanted or said by the congregation. This church, they, they sing it. Um, they are singing it. They have music going. Um, so right away, you are woken up. If you are sleepy on a Sunday church morning, you're not going to be um, because they wake you up. Um, then they do the call of worship, um, kind of a nice back and forth. Um, and it's Reverend Alice at this time doing that. So that was kind of nice. You know, it was like she's, she's speaking to you, then you respond back to her. And it's nice because here in the thing, if you're new like I was, they have everything in here telling you, you know, how you respond back. So you're not that person sitting there going, I don't know what to say here. So that was really nice to have that. Um, the praise and worship, is my hope is built in the song. And again, they give you everything you need right here um, so that you can follow along and not feel silly. Um, they do the invocation. Um, and then the prayer and response. Um, and then the scripture uh, they did the, and I cannot say this correctly, and I will say that Pastor Terrence, Pastor Cato, he was joking the entire service with him and his wife about the pronunciation of Habakkuk, H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. -K -K. I cannot pronounce that. They are going back and forth in the proper way to pronounce that. But chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, and then chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And then also Luke chapter 17, uh, 1 to 10. Um, so, um, his message was more of with the Abaka, so I'm going to totally pronounce incorrectly, Abaka, can't do it, I'm sorry, um, was to kind of just slow down and, and, and to wait and to watch, um, what you, what you want and need in life, um, to, you know, ask for what you need, but be patient, um, because as he was saying, you know, God works on God's time, you know, not that he's not listening to you, he just works on his time, so kind of, you know, wait, watch, um, and remember what you learn, remember what you see, um, his, um, service, you know, he, he spoke, I mean, we were there all together for about two hours, 
lots of music. Um, that is something I definitely know, the music. Um, you know, you go to the Catholic Church and you do hear some beautiful choir singing and, you know, beautiful voices. We well, have, you know, beautiful voices here also. Um, but I, I feel to a degree some of it is just more joyful. Um, I'm not saying that the Catholic churches aren't joyful, but I definitely felt um, almost like you were at a party. Um, they had the uh, brother Melford who did a portion of praise and he you know, he did a, like a prayer, but he did a song to it. And I mean, in the one church I went to, that would have been a big no-no. You don't, you don't put, a, you know, a prayer to song, which I don't know what the hymns are, but whatever. Um, and it was just really, it was fun to watch it. And, you know, you stand up and you clap your hands and, or if you want to stay sitting, you can stay sitting. You know, there was no, um, there was no, you must do it this way. You know, you go to the Catholic church, stand, sit, kneel, stand, sit, kneel, stand, sit, kneel. Um, and, you know, the Catholic, our father and also with you and, you know, and it, this was more of a, while they did have the areas where you could, you know, you followed with them and you responded back. It was also um, very much encouraged to just respond how you responded. And in fact, the, you know, Pastor Cato, Reverend Cato, you know, in his opening, he was said, you know, this is how I, this is what I do. And, um, you know, people may yell. He's like, I cry. And he's like, you know, whatever you do is fine. And I, I did enjoy, you know, I, I liked that. Um, very welcoming, um, hugged by so many people I've never met before. Um, they did do the, um, they do announcements for the church, which is really nice. Um, I, I'm sure most churches do that, but they did do the announcements, just telling what's going on and what's happening and what they're working towards. Uh, definitely, we were invited back. Um, then they have uh, the altar call, which they around the where the reverend preaches. They have a uh, kneeling spaces, so you can go up and pray up there with the reverend. Um, you do a special prayer, I guess, and. I did not do that because my knees would not have allowed that. Um, then the hymn of preparation, and then they, he did his uh, preached word, and then he did an invitation to the church. You know, if people want to convert to the church or you know move to the church or if they need a special prayer, and then they did the affirmation of faith, and then the doxology, and then the benediction again. Um, and what was nice about the church, which a lot of churches are doing now is that they have um, an online service that's happening at the same time. And then as um, they were saying, they also have um, Sunday schools uh, or 9.30 and they have the option looking at their thing that you can actually call in on. So you don't have to be there in person. They give you the code, you can call in. Um, they do a Bible study every Wednesday. Uh, they do morning prayer calls on Thursdays and they have like codes. And then they have a thought for the week, um, which their thought for this week was God hears every unspoken word, sees every unseen wound, mends every unbearable pain, have faith and be strong. Our hope and our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> so I am not a churchgoer, like I said. Um, and again, there's some things that, you know, people who are strict churchgoers believe that I just, I don't believe that. doesn't mean I don't believe all that they believe. I just don't believe some what they believe. If I was going to go to a church, I would go to this one. Um, potentially consider going back to it. My only thing is it's 40 minutes from my home. Um, so if it was closer, I, I feel I would definitely go back here. Um, and really just the atmosphere. It wasn't fire and brimstone preaching. It wasn't, you must do this and repent and do your sins. Like it wasn't, you know, you must follow our way. It was just very, this is what I, you know, this it was, I guess the kind of a gentle word of God, so to speak, um, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, and not, you know, not like, not forceful, but just, this is, let me just, let me just tell you this is what Reverend Cato was doing. Let me, let me tell you this. Let me show you this. A new perspective of something. Um, so I did like that. 
Um, on a personal thing to Dr. Childs, I did tell them that I was there for um, this class. And so Reverend Cato, he, um, he said he would actually like it if you could contact him at some point. He would love to get his congregation together with other congregations. Um, so it's, um, I'll put his, I'll put the link on this too, but he, if, you know, they're a very small congregation. So, but if you're ever interested, um, his, um, e his email is pastor T Cato at yahoo.com. And his number is 859-421-0497. Um, but he, he was serious. He really wanted me to let you know that he would really be interested in getting his congregation together with other congregations. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there to you. And, um, overall, I wasn't sure what to, I mean, it's church, so I knew what to expect going to church, but I, I, I almost felt like I had friends like immediately upon entering that church. And by the time I left, I mean, I sat there and spoke to Reverend Alice for probably 20, 25 minutes about football. Um, so potential, um, ideas in my head of if I could ever do it, I would go back to that church. And so I'm kind of grateful, I guess, for that in this assignment. I found a place that actually kind of felt kind of maybe it's okay if I go there. So that's all. Everyone have a great day.